Working with Puff, I would like to look at it as like a master PhD program in music business <laughs> because I had just graduated from NYU. I graduated a year early and I rushed through school and I went straight into um, the whole making the band situation. Um, I was just trying to get in the industry any way I could and that was, that was a way in. You read about it, you took classes on it, <laughs> you went to, you know, a weekend seminar, whatever. There's nothing like actually having to live these things of the music industry, the business, publishing, all that to really teach you and really get you on your game. So I definitely learned how to apply and up my business savvy, <laughs> having to deal with a business tycoon like, you know, Puff, because he's on his business. He's a marketing mogul. He knows, you know, contracts in, out, sideways, up and down. He has a team of lawyers that do at least. So I, myself, also had to come with it. You know what I'm saying? I had to have my ace in the hole lawyer. I had to be up on, I, I had to know the, the articles of the contract just as well as whoever I was paying so that I can say, oh, whoop, dee -dee -dee, wait a minute, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or like, how do we, it's how do I make this the best situation for me? Because at the end of the day, that's what happens to a lot of artists or a lot of, you know, aspiring people trying to get in. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. At least I knew what I was getting myself into and I knew how to massage and manipulate the situation as as much as I could at the level that I was at, the leverage that I had. I would say like the realest conversation that I had with Puff was the conversation when I was asking him to let me out of my contract because he fired me on TV, but I was still held in my contract. So I was, I had to just, you know, you know, we learned from people like Mace and the Locks and whoever else that, you know, threatened his life and, you know, <laughs> did all kind of crazy stuff in the street. like. I'm a girl, you know what I'm saying? What am I gonna do? So I just had to like have a real conversation when we sat down at his, uh, one of his lofts, I don't know, all the places he lives, but we had a conversation and we just talked about it. And I was like, look, I know what you're capable of. And I don't think I deserve any of that treatment because we never had that, you know, relationship, but you know, you've decided to let me go for whatever reason you wanna go forward with this one or that one, and that's cool. So I think I deserve for you to let me go so someone else who wants to, you know, take my career to the next level can have that opportunity or let me do it by myself. I think he respected me for that. I don't know. I don't think he would ever tell me to my face he respects me, but maybe he does. Maybe he thinks in his Rolodex of people that he's dealt with, you know what? I respect D Woods. I would like to think that's how he thinks of me. But you know, sometimes you just have to, you have to use your diplomatic side of things. And I, I just really had to learn how to do business. I had to be a business woman, you know what I'm saying? I had to put my big girl draws on and, <laughs> and really know what I was talking about because they want you to not know. They want you to have no idea and let everybody else handle it. And when you actually talk about things and you're knowledgeable, you can ask certain questions because you have this knowledge. If you don't even know the knowledge, you don't even know what questions to ask. So you don't even know what rights you have. You don't know what splits, percentages, how your mechanical royalties break down separate from your publishing, separate from your performance royalties, all that stuff. And it's like, uh, it gets, you know, as a creative person, you just want to stick your head in the sand and turn the music up, but no. No, no, no. Take your headphones off, put your glasses on or whatever. Start looking at that fine print and know what you're talking about, so. You know, we're demoralized from the time we step foot into the industry to the time we get out and beyond because um, women have to be stick thin, skinny or whatever, you know, to get to be successful. And men don't, we know that. I know I'm a role model because I, my parents grew me up in a way where I still represent yourself, still be classy. You know, go out there and kill them on stage, but when you come off, just represent yourself in a different, in a certain way. Because I do want the, the youth out there to look up to me. And I was like, dude, why are you acting like that? And he was like, acting like what? And I was like, Serene. And he was like, nah, man, my name's not Serene. And I was like, what's, what's your name? He's like, Aziz, man, my name is Aziz. And I was like, oh my God, my name is Lizzo. You can't depend on other people believing in you. Cause I'll never forget, I was in high school and this boy, I told him I wanted to be a rapper. 
and he specifically, like people say this all the time, but he specifically told me, he was like, you will never be a rapper. And he laughed, but this was my homie. So I'm just like, I low key laughed, but I was low key like, dang. 